This is the second video of lesson 10, long, long ago. Last time, I posted root position, and along with that, I posted also waltz pattern piece. Yes, some of you already practiced and finished, I know, which is good. Now, today, I upgraded waltz pattern and will add a little bit different techniques here so you may can apply to your songs. Let's see what kind of technique it is. One, two, three, go. first. If you're looking at the score, I wrote the C with whole note and the last of three notes are in quarter notes. It means you have to hold it down at the bottom. That way it sounds more smooth and full. Otherwise, if you leave it like this, it sounds bumpy and rough. But try not to hold it from the beginning. If you can, Yes, of course, it would be better. But if not, that's okay. Just leave it and practice first. But what the bottom note 4 means, it doesn't mean that 1, 2, 3, 4 and playing it, but instead 1, 2, 3, 4. You have to keep holding the pinkies, the C. That's what it is through the whole entire song. So let's go left hand first. 1, 2, Three, go. C, two, three, four. C again. Two, three, four. G, but step down. And three, four here. G seventh and C chord. So this part you have to shift the chorus two times within a measure. So G seventh, one, two, three, four. The B goes one. this very last measure of the first line and what about moving on to the second line C again so keep hold C again the same G here and G7 and C so practice only this part Third line, G seventh chord. Here, one, two, three, and instead of playing four, we have to play G because that's the melody line. And F two C again, and G seventh two three four F C, and the same. Move it onto the next line. within the measure. How are we going to play it? C, each one chord. F, C. So one, two, three, four. That's how B goes. So one, two, three, four. You have to shift fast it's from C to shifting up and shifting down. Some people are playing like this, holding at the bottom and then only changing the top. Now, 
we're working on changing the chords. So shifting everything to remember the positions. Got it? I will play a slow whole entire song. Let's see. Both hands play together. Three and four and one and blocking the chords. I don't know, it depends. Some people said warts is easier. Some people said blocking the chord is easier. I don't know which one is easier for you. Think about it. But both patterns we use often. You need to practice both no matter how good you are or how bad you are. Just keep working on it. So for this week, practice separate hands for left hand only by yourself and then edit the right hand. Try not to play from the beginning, then it will be disaster. Or maybe if you're good at it, that's fine. You can play it right and left and both hands together and even root position and warts pattern at the same time, that's fine. But if not, start working on left hand by yourself a couple of times. If it's not good, then take it out the part that we have to switch the chord several times and try to remember which note to which one and where to where so that you know all the positions. Then add it right hand. Finally, we're going to learn a new left hand pattern called Arberti Bass. This pattern was named after the composer's name Arberti, who first used this left hand pattern on his song. And it became so popular and loved by the composers then every classical composers used this left hand pattern on their songs and it became a figure of classical time competitions maybe you may have heard <laughs> how to use it and where it came from and how to apply it to your song. Let's see. The easiest way to remember the arbitrary bass is one, five, three, five. That's not the finger number, but the key numbers. Now one means if it's a C chord, C is number one. And five means from the C chord, you go off five. So one, two, three, four, five. One, five, three, five. That's the arbitrary bass. Very simple. If you know 
then you can apply this one to the different chords. For example, G chord. This is G. Then that's one, five, three, five. So it's just literally you play the bass chord, top chord, and middle chord. Yes. And if it's F chord, then how it goes? Yes. F, five, which is a C, three, which is A, and come back to C again. So one, five, three, five means not the finger numbers, but it's note key numbers. So you start with the bass and go up five and three, five. Now, what if we use inversions? We use C and G like this instead of going up here. Then how are we gonna do? You can just play it. That's fine. Just bottom, top, middle, top. Remember that way. That's fine too. It's a still G chord. You can use bottom, top, middle, top. And then come back to C again. And what if it's G seventh? How do we play it? We play it like this, right? Then bottom, top, middle, top. So every song or every chord, whenever you see bottom, top, middle, top is kind of arbitrary bass. Actual arbitrary bass is one, five, three, five. But if we change the chord to the inversions, that's the repetition. Inversion means if we move the C up to here and changing like this position, we can still use bottom, top, middle top that's what the error to base now let's see how we can apply to the song if you're looking at the score it's a C yeah basically start with C original root position so we can play it C G E G bottom As I explained to you, we can play it bottom, top, middle, top, and G7. We play this note, right? Then bottom, top, middle, top, and come back to C again. Bottom, top, middle, top. What about the F? The same. have in this music because we have C's, G, G7th, and F. That's all we have in this music. And we use going down for G and middle note changing to G7th and F will be shifting up bottom and top. Then in here we just use bottom top middle top bottom top middle top. It seems pretty easy right? But if you play with your right hand, it's really confusing. So just go by line by line first. And once you get the rhythm, then it goes really easy. Some people said arbitrary bass is easier than others. I think, yes, that's true. But all the, the rhythm matching part is kind of confusing. Now let's see, both hands together. I will play it in regular tempo so that you know how it should be sound like.
I will go slow. One, N, two, N, three, N, four, N, C chord. But in here, we play D, F instead of coming to G. Why? Because G is melody line. So we have to play it G twice again. Then if we come G, then we have to play G three times. So what we do is F and coming to G. So this part is the only exception from the Arvarsity bass that we learned the bottom top middle top. But this is instead of bottom top middle top, we come just come to F and G going right away. So circle this part. This is the only exception. Then the last part is exactly the same as before. And move it on to measure 10. repeated it and right hand is just keep on straining the sign melody line only the confusing part is matching the rhythm because left hand plays all the way through the eighth note but the right hand is quarter eighth quarter eighth so it's kind of confusing very first time if you're trying this kind of left hand pattern but once you get it then it should be easier just take it out, the two measures, and practice. Basically, one and, and then the last of two are going together. Do you see, the always the first note is quarter. Quarter goes low one and, and then you're matching it together. So basically, remember, your bottom top is going along and middle top is you know, play with your right hand together. So, the long left hand and together.
hear definitely a lot for C. So practice these two measures over and over again until you get comfortable. Then play it whole entire song. Don't try it from beginning to the end. Then it will give you lots of frustration. So start working slow. This pattern will be used so many times over and over again in any place. So you really need to know as you play piano, you will learn how important is this left hand pattern. So try not to get it soon. You need at least two to three weeks to master this. Then once you master, then in any songs, if you see these left hand pattern, you can play it well. Now, finally, we are done with our second session, level two. And we are going to move it on to the level three, which will be expanding more keys. We tried to learn from C to basis C to treble C, but this time we will expand the key a little more. And also we're going to learn sharps and flats. Finally, we have completed level two, learning about primary chords Amen chords and play these chords in different inversions and what do we learn? About different patterns. Block the chord or quartz pattern or even arbitrary bass. Yes, you should know basic chord, quartz pattern, and arbitrary bass, and then we can work it on next level. But before we move it on to the level three, I want you to work on this new types of left hand quartz patterns, holding the bass and our ability bass. After that, a couple of days later, I will post it review test. And if you don't know the review test, then you have to go over again and check what you missed then you have to learn and finish the chord. Otherwise, if you move it on to the next one, you will get confused more and more. If you have any questions or a problem, then don't hesitate to contact me. Just let me know and I will help you out from your questions or your problems. And I hope you enjoy new patterns and we'll see you next time. Glove on your practice. Bye.